Uh, why don't we open our Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Uh, there's just been uh, a weight in my spirit uh, with this theme this morning. I didn't preach this message, but I was in this vein, and I just felt this same vein uh, for this uh, morning session, and I just pray it'll be a blessing to you more than anything. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, verse 26 rather, Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, if you have it say amen, likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us which groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Last scripture, verse 29, For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I feel to preach to you, really bear my heart to you here this morning, uh, and preach on this subject, the pain of humanity. The pain of humanity. Why don't you lay your Bibles down? Everyone close your eyes and lift up your hands. And let's ask God to have his way. Lord, I submit to your will. I submit to your plan for today. Lord, I submit to whatever you want to do. Lord, I ask for you to minister to this wonderful congregation, to the wonderful leadership that is represented here. Lord, I ask that there would be an anointing that would come down from heaven that would change lives forever. Lord, help me to bear forth my soul to your people, God, without any restraint, without any care, Lord, but to follow your spirit to a T and minister into the lives and the hearts of this precious people, God. Do something in us that will chain us, change us, give us an eternal perspective in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you clap your hands to the Lord right now? Can you clap those hands a little bit louder with expectancy? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There are things in this Christian walk, I confess to you, that I battle uh, trying to comprehend and understand. When I look at certain situations, I scratch my head sometimes and I wonder how could God be in anything like that? When I try to console certain lives and certain people that endure loss it's tough for me to form the words and say everything is going to be all right because in that moment i'm just going to be honest with you it doesn't look right it doesn't feel right and i know i'm not enduring their pain but i feel their pain when they open their mouths and tell me about the losses they've endured I just came from Dallas, Texas on Friday. I flew back yesterday. And as I'm preaching in this congregation, there was a wonderful music director and his wife that I prayed for. Incredible 
young couple that hasn't been married for maybe not even three years, 20 years old, 19 years old, I, I, around that age. And, and I prayed for them in the altar. And as I prayed for them in the altar, I noticed uh, the wife, she be just began to shriek as she just cried uncontrollable tears. And I just began to pray somehow God's going to get glory uh, out of what has happened to you. I didn't know all the specifics but I just prayed and she just shrieked and cried out as the women of the church gathered around her and come to find out literally last week she buried her child that was born as a stillborn born as a stillborn she right after a wonderful Sunday service two weeks ago the baby wasn't moving. They went to the hospital. They said, man, the baby's dead. Would you like to take, go home and, 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 and have, you know, induce labor later or would you like to do it now? So right after that Sunday afternoon, after a powerful message, there she is uh, laying on the hospital bed, uh, having to give birth to a dead baby. And I don't know what to tell people when they battle with things like that. I don't know how to form the words and try to minister to that type of pain. And as after the prayer, after I prayed with her at the altar and we had a fellowship afterwards, after we fellowshiped afterwards, they came up to me and they were smiling. They were smiling and they said, Brother Jackson, uh, you helped us so much. You helped us so much. We lost our baby uh, a week ago. We, we buried him. And I used to sing to that baby whenever he was in my womb. I used to sing to him church songs and I envisioned them worshiping the Lord and I envisioned him uh, being used by God and I envisioned great things for him and we buried him last week but brother Jackson your words really helped us and strengthened us to get through this and she's smiling and, and there's joy on her and they said look brother Jackson let me show you the picture of our baby let me show you and on the screensaver they showed me the baby uh, in a little diaper so precious but it was lifeless and I began to tear up inside and I'm like God how, how does pain come like this in a life and how can I give them hope when they're battling things like this and I have a friend in, in, in Texas as well a friend his wife uh, just got diagnosed with leukemia one of the most beautiful uh, young ladies one of the most incredible powerful couples I had a friend last year that was a preacher they were just stepping out to evangelize but one day after 30 minutes after his son telling him that he loved them uh, uh, all of a sudden the house caught on fire and his son died in that fire huh? and now it's just him his wife and his little girl and he thinks about that boy every day and I think to God I think God how can all this pain exist in this time uh, and I realized that in Job's life, he was he sacrificed to God and he was righteous and he was pure and he sacrificed to God and that got the attention of heaven. But it was his pain that brought the action from heaven. Righteousness gets God's attention, but pain gives God's action. God sees pain he can't help but come down and get involved uh, and bring healing and peace that passes all understanding I didn't know how they were able to smile uh, after just bringing their baby and I just began to see a glimpse of God uh, as they smiled and shed tears uh, and had joy all over them they said I got a peace uh, brother Jackson that passes all understanding brother Jackson I, uh, I know that God's in control I know that God's gonna strengthen us we're just going to keep on serving God. Uh, we're just going to keep on being faithful. Uh, we're just going to keep on being involved. Uh, and when I saw that ability to endure, uh, I knew that God uh, had reached down and wrapped up their pain uh, and lifted them up to a higher dimension. Righteousness brings God, gets God's attention, but pain brings God as action. God was working in the heavens before Job's pain, but his pain.
rain caused God to move into earth. And when Job lost everything, he lost he lost his family, he lost his money, he lost everything that was close to him. Yet he said, "Naked came I out of my mother's womb; naked shall I return." He said, "The Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away, and blessed be the name of the Lord." And I realize that when you have that type of perspective of God, when everything is taken away from you, you still have God. And God is the most important thing that you can have when you go through hell. Come on, somebody. You can take my money, but you can't take God from me. You can take my family, but you can't take God from me. And the reason I can bless them, because when I lost everything, I'm in ashes everywhere. I still have God to lift me up. Oh, somebody clap their hands and just thank them. Oh. And I realize that's how you survive the pain. You survive the pain because, because God is there and I have him to cleave the to. the same events uh, the same in series of unfortunate events uh, that cause people to leave God uh, is the same series of unfortunate events uh, that cause people to cleave to God uh, uh, those same events that cause people to doubt uh, is the same events that cause people to believe uh, the same events that make people give up uh, is the same events that make people refuse to give in come on somebody uh, it's just your perspective perspective I value God above everything I value God above every material possession I value God before every blessing he is most important and that's what pain brings me to pain brings me to that realization that God is the priority and the power that's in my life God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. I am giving you a promised son, Isaac. Look what God said. But Isaac's not your reward. Isaac's your promise. I'm your reward. And when I told you to leave everything behind in Mesopotamia, the end result wasn't you having a son Isaac. The end result is you knowing me. And I used Isaac to lead you closer to me. That's the only reason why I gave you Isaac is for you to have an undeniable trust and who I am and when Abraham started his journey he thought he would immediately receive the promise but after 20 years he finally gets the promise but he started the journey as Abram and God changed his name to Abraham because Abraham was growing on the journey to the promise and the promise was only there to make him into what he needed to be in the journey he said I am your exceeding great reward and when I give you gifts the value is not in the gift the value is in me the gift must lead to me and when I give you a miracle the value is not the miracle I only give you the miracle to lead to me as a matter of fact if the miracle never leads to me then the miracle did not work its purpose the miracle is supposed to lead you closer to me blind Bartimaeus after he got healed the Bible says he followed Jesus. That is the end result of a miracle. A miracle is supposed to lead you back to Calvary. Lead you back to an altar. Lead you back to Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, I'm your exceeding great reward. And now that I've given you the promise, Abraham, I want you to put that promise on the altar. And I want you to sacrifice him. 
Because I've got to know that I'm still first and foremost in your life. I've got to know that my, the reward is greater than the promise. I've got to, I've got to know if you still esteem me is more valuable uh, than what I have given you. Uh, and I want to know if you're willing to put down and sacrifice what I gave you uh, so you can have more uh, of me. All of us must come to that realization uh, that he has started us on a journey to know him. Uh, and he doesn't want us to build tabernacles uh, around what he gave us uh, and what he did for us uh, he wants us to get into his presence uh, and draw closer to him uh, and know who he is and that's why uh, God in his grace and mercy uh, gives us miracles, signs and wonders uh, and you know what he said how disappointed he was uh, when he said you know what he said you know what you worked miracles uh, you did this you did that you prophesied in my name uh, but he said I never knew you uh, how many of us uh, can work in those miracles yet never know him uh, or even receive those miracles uh, yet never know him uh, what God was saying was I only gave you that ability uh, to lead you to me uh, I gave you that miracle uh, to lead you into closer relationship uh, I gave you that anointing uh, to lead you to become more like me uh, and whenever that doesn't happen come on somebody uh, you wasted what I gave you uh, because what I gave you was supposed to lead you into me come on now somebody's got to tell God today huh? God you can take everything away from me huh? but take not thy presence huh? take not thy Holy Spirit from me he said that I am your exceeding great reward. He, ministry, even those that are involved in ministry, those that have a future for ministry. He told the Levites who were the ministers, he said, look, ministers, I'm not giving you anything in the promised land. He said, Levites, ministry, you're not going to have one thing of inheritance in the promised land. He said, your inheritance is me. And I am more valuable than anything that you possess. And you are so privileged. Looks like you don't have nothing. But if you have me, you have everything. I am your reward. The reward of ministry is God and nothing else. Ooh, that's the reward. I think about whenever Lazarus and the rich man die, and Lazarus is in heaven in the bosom of Abraham, but the rich man is dead, and he's in hell. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. He said, Lazarus, bring me a drop of water on my tongue. And Abraham said, no, he's not coming down. No, that's not going to happen. And look what this rich man says. He says, well, why don't you send Lazarus to my brothers? Because if they see one rise from the dead, they will believe. You know what Abraham said? He said, no, they have Moses and the prophets. And if they believe not them, even the one rise from the dead they would not believe. <sighs> he said, what they have is the word. And if they don't believe the word, even if I do miracles, they still would not believe. I've seen a lot of people leave God after getting miracles. But I've never seen a person leave God when they had the word hit in their heart. The miracle is supposed to lead to the word. Don't interrupt your miracle. Allow it to lead you to becoming like him. Romans 8.28, you can put it up there. 
It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. We know, we like, we quote this scripture wrong a lot of time. Because we like to say, and we know that all things work together for our good. It doesn't say our good. It says for good. This is not man's definition of good. This is God's definition of good. Because you and I have different definitions of what good is. If I was homeless and someone blessed me with a shed about this big, I'm going to look at this shed and be like, man, God's good. But if I've been living in a mansion all my life and they gift me that same shed after I've lost everything, I'm going to look at the same shed and say, this is a curse. You and I have different definitions of what good is. And this word good is not our definition. This is God's definition of good. The Greek word good is agathos, which literally means intrinsically good not outward circumstances what's on the inside that happens that's what makes it good it's what's happening in you in the midst of your trial that makes it good and the success of a trial is not the outcome, but it's what you become in that trial that makes it successful. I may have lost everything, but I'm becoming like Jesus. I, I may have lost everything, but there's something in me that he is molding me and conforming me into what he wants me to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he said, it's all working for good because the blessing and the trials and the hurts, it is making you into the image of God. The success of a trial is not what you get on the outside afterwards. It's what happened in you. You got a compassionate heart now. You got a tender heart now. You know, we don't have to beg you to worship now because there's a voluntary praise that comes out because you have become uh, more like God. Well, somebody clap their hands for that revelation. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and thank God for that revelation. Ha, ba, 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 sit in here. Ha, I am becoming more like God and that's why that woman could smile after she lost her baby because she knew that God was using it to make her more like him so she could minister to others and others be affected by the pain that she had endured she you know what she didn't regret it because it molded her into something as a matter of fact she couldn't smile like that before it wasn't until the the pain occurred huh, that God began to adjust that smile huh, where it was an authentic smile huh, it was not put on it was not a church facade huh, it was something on the inside huh, joy began to move huh, in her heart and in her spirit huh, because my trial huh, made me more huh, like him huh, and the next verse says for whom he did for no huh, he also did predestinate huh, to be conformed huh, into the image of his son my trial is conforming me into the image of God the fire is conforming me into the image of God and don't judge my success by how I look outwardly I want you to look on the inside something has happened to me something has transformed me something has touched me and I can't explain it but I know that he's working I know that he's working in me 
Hallelujah. I'm becoming, I'm becoming more like Jesus. I am a partaker of his sufferings. Oh, we all want to be like Jesus except when it comes to the cross. We want to be like Jesus when it's resurrection time and when it's purpose. And when it comes to the crucifixion, we shun that Jesus. But God said, that's why I'm using the blessings and the pain to conform you, to make something out of you so you can be effective and be what I have said you would be. Can I tell you, you look at Victor Jackson right now. I'm not here because of the blessings that have been in my life. I'm here because the pain that worked in me began to mold me into the image of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm not here because of open doors and because of blessed lips can I tell you well I'm here you know what I'm here by uh, I'm here because there was a young boy there was a five year old boy uh, that was beaten and abused uh, and neglected and victims of domestic violence that's why I'm here uh, I'm here because I had a stepdad that used to beat the daylights out of me every day that's why I'm here uh, I'm here because I felt like a failure uh, felt like I could never be anything uh, they used to lock me in closets uh, lock me in storage rooms uh, and tell me they wish I would die uh, that's why I'm here uh, it's the pain uh, that made me what I am uh, it is the pain uh, that brought forth this anointing uh, it is the pain uh, that did something in me that nobody can ever understand That's why I'm here. You know why I'm here? Because when I came to God, my family rejected me and shunned me for three years after I came to God. They didn't speak a word to me. They thought I was a failure for giving my life to Jesus. But that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here able to help you. It's not because you can't relate to my blessings, but I know you can relate to my pain. And it is my pain that makes me relatable. It is my pain. Hey, I've been touched with the feelings uh, of your infirmities uh, Jesus uh, has been touched with the feelings uh, of your infirmities uh, and he affected the world Can I tell you, we can't, we can't relate to God as creator, but we can relate to him as a creature. And he, he created the world with his words, but he saved the world with his wound. And it is the wound that makes us all relatable. It is the wound that lets us know, hey, you are flesh and bone. You're looking at me like I'm just some resurrected, glorified figure, Thomas. Well, let me show you my scars. And let me show you the handprint. And let me show you the wound in my side. And he said, my Lord and my God. When I heard your word, I couldn't believe. But when I saw your wound, your wound showed me something that I've never seen before. Come on, somebody. It is the wound that God will use. I need somebody to take a praise break right now. And I want you to thank God for every struggle, every trial, every fail. Somebody clap their hands in this building. Come on, clap a little louder right now. That's it, you can run if you want. That's it, you can shout if you want. That's it, you can dance as you want. Because God's going to get glory out of the pain that I've endured. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ha ba ba sere be hetabahaya. 
I thank God for my affliction because my affliction has made me relatable the success of a trial is not the outcome if, if it didn't work out like you wanted it to God didn't fail you I've come to preach bitterness out of your spirit and tell you just because it didn't work out like you thought it would that doesn't mean God wasn't there and that God didn't love you no he loved you enough to change you he loved you enough to open up your heart again he loved you enough to change you from the inside out and so my success is not the outcome but it's what I become that makes me successful everybody wants the spirit of God everybody wants the breath of God but can I tell you man does it become a living soul with just the breath of God the dirt has to be there and it is the dirt and the breath that makes man become a living soul can I tell you all the dirt in your life all the hell in your life all the pain in your life when God gets in it there's gonna be something that changes there's gonna be something that provokes there's gonna be something that ascends out of you that you never knew was there Ababa said to him, I want you to stand on your feet right now. And I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. There's somebody hurting that's next to you right now. There's somebody that's wounded. There's somebody that's been in pain. And I want you to pray that God would get glory out of their life and conform them into God's image. He come on said that God's spirit would come down and conform them into his image. God's not done with you he's making you God's not done with you he's just working on you and you're gonna survive this pain you're gonna survive this tragedy you're gonna survive this hurt just allow God to make you into what he wants you I'd send somebody praying the Holy Ghost right now Oh, come on, my city. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's it, that's it. All my miracles, all of my pain is leading me to become more like him. You're going to thank God for it before you leave this place. God, I thank God for the wound because my wound is what made me pray. I thank God for my pain because it's my pain that made me work. I thank God for my enemy because it is my enemy that provoked me to cry out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh I feel a healing balm in this place. I want you to grab that person's hand and I want you to bring them to the front right now. Everybody, come to the front as fast as you can. There's about to be a powerful outpouring of God's spirit and refreshing and renewing on every prayer. Run up here, everybody. Don't talk to the person next to you. Just grab their hand and you run up as close as you can. And I want you to clap as you come forward because I feel something changing in the atmosphere from the front to the back everybody come up front from the oldest to the youngest come up front and clap those hands to the Lord right now Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Oh, so can somebody just pray for a little bit right now? I'll give you instruction in a moment, but why don't you just open up your mouth and just begin to pray? Oh, oh I feel your touch, Lord. Oh, I feel your touch, Jesus. when I don't understand that I feel your touch Lord conforming you me into your image Lord I feel you changing me Jesus I feel you changing me Jesus <laughs> Lord, in your faithfulness, you have afflicted me, Lord. I went astray. If I had not been afflicted, I would have gone astray. But, Lord, it's the wound that keeps me close to you, Jesus. It's the pain that keeps me on my knees, Lord. When I was blessed, I forgot all that you did for me. When I was blessed, I forgot all the doors you opened for me. But when I got wounded, it brought me back to your faithfulness, Jesus. It brought me back to your name, oh God. Oh, I want everyone to lift up your hands where you are right now. I want you to close your eyes and lift up your hands. And as you lift up those hands, you're, what you're showing God is that you're giving him those hurts and pains this morning. You're not going to hold on to him anymore. You're giving it to him so he can use it to change you. That's it. Lift up those hands right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we give it back to you, Lord. Just use it to mold me. Just use it to change me. Just use it, God. Just use it, Lord. Just use it, Lord. Oh, Rabba I give it to you, Jesus. That's it. What we're going to do together is we're, is we're going to repent. We're going to ask God to forgive us if, if we've been bitter against Him for our pain. We're going to ask God to wash us and cleanse us if we've been, if we've held that pain against Him and been bitter against Him for what we've been going through. We're going to repent of that together. And when we do, it's going to open up an avenue for His Spirit to flow afresh on our lives. I want you to lift up those hands one more time as I want you to open up your mouth and ask God to forgive you if there's any pain that you have cleaved to that have that has made you go astray and ask him to forgive you if there's been anything that has caused you to be bitter at him lord forgive me jesus jesus i ask you to cleanse me lord i'm sorry if i allowed my pain to distant me from you make me more distant from you lord i'm i apologize jesus if i if it's caused me to if i blamed you jesus i'm not blaming you lord i'm not gonna blame me anymore i'm sorry if it's affected my worship i'm sorry if it's affected my praise lord i'm sorry if it's caused me to sin cleanse me of all sin cleanse me of all unrighteousness lord i'm sorry if i blamed you i'm sorry if it affected my worship i'm sorry if it affected my service i'm sorry if it affected my faithfulness jesus forgive me lord i don't want to blame you jesus i give it back to you 
you just use it Jesus just use it to mold me just use it to change me Lord I'm not going to hold you I'm not going to blame you for it anymore forgive me wash me and cleanse me I'm nothing without you I need you to touch me and heal me and do what you can do in my life oh hallelujah 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 I feel I feel that there are some some tender hearts in this place that are ready for God to pour out something on you right now I'm gonna pray over you and I'm telling you there's something that's about to happen in this place if you don't normally linger in the altar, I'm going to ask you this morning to just kind of linger in the altar because there's just going to be wave after wave of a healing balm that goes throughout this place that begins to touch us on the inside in a powerful way. What we're going to do is we're just going to lift up our hands again. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to pray that God will give, bring glory out of your wounds and out of your hurts and out of your pains. I'm going to pray that God's Spirit would come on you in a mighty way. I'm going to pray that God would pour out His Spirit on you if you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost. While you're worshiping, you're going to feel yourself want to speak in something you don't understand. That is the Holy Ghost. You just allow it to come down and take that step of faith and speak it out if you have the holy ghost when you shout in a moment you're going to feel to speak it out again just let it go it's going to refresh there's going to be a joy that comes on the inside god is molding us here together i want everyone to close their eyes and lift up both hands one more time i'm going to pray a prayer of faith when i'm done i'm going to shout with expectation i'm just going to shout hallelujah and when I shout hallelujah, I want everyone in this building to shout hallelujah. Believing God for healing. Believing God for restoration. Believing God for a fresh touch. That's it. Close those eyes and lift up those hands. Jesus, by the authority that's in your word. And by the power that is in the name that is above all names. The name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I ask you to loose a healing balm in this place. Lord, there are people here that have traveled from near and far that have needed this word because they've been bitter and they've been calloused. And Lord, I ask for your word and your spirit to work together and be mixed with their faith right now. I release the power of the Holy Ghost. I release joy unspeakable and full of glory. I release a refreshing upon this congregation. I release a turnaround where they would never be the same. I release a joy. I release a, I release them into everything that you want them to be right now. And Lord, as a sound of faith, we're going to shout with expectation. We're going to shout believing God to make a difference. Hallelujah! that's it, that's it, let those tongues go. That's it, that's the Holy Ghost on you. That is the refreshing, that is the healing. Oh, I feel it in this building. Oh, I feel it in this building. He's going to use your pain right now to minister to somebody else. I want you to lay your hands on the person next to you. I want you to grab their head if you can. I want you to put your arm around their shoulder. And I want God to use your pain right now to minister to somebody else. That's it. Lay your hands on them. And just close your eyes. And just pray that God would bring glory out of your pain to minister to the person beside you. Ba 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 ba